thank you for coming today. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, non-contact jet dispensing. So for today, we'll talk about what is jetting, uh, how piezoelectric jet valves work, how to select the proper valve, uh, the benefits of jetting, and why jetting is preferred in certain applications. But to do that, we'll first talk about what's out there today. Uh, the tried and true methods for dispensing are typically using air powered dispensers, whether they be a syringe type dispenser, a dispense valve, or a dispense valve coupled with XY uh, technology. These are excellent applications, excellent uh, pieces of equipment, very repeatable, very reliable, uh, and they're still very repeatable and reliable going forward. Today what we're going to talk about are jetting applications when you're specifically dealing with increased production speeds uh, and high precision. This is a typical jetting valve application. So in jetting, what we're doing, or jetting is the uh, ability to precisely eject control droplet of assembly fluid out from a valve orifice onto a substrate or a part. Uh, it requires the ability to impart sufficient energy by mechanical means to force the, uh, the dot out of the orifice and onto the part. It's a basic principle, uh, piezoelectric technology. And we have two stacks on the valve. When the bottom stack is charged, it pulls the ceiling head open. It allows the material under pressure to flow through. When the top stack is charged, the valve closes, and in that closing, it propels the fluid onto the part. Your typical system configuration is a valve or multiple valves, a controller coupled with a driver, and your fluid reservoir. For the jet valve configuration, we keep a few things into consideration. One, the viscosity of the material. Whether it's a low, medium, or high viscosity, that's going to determine the type of valve you decide to go with. We have various nozzle sizes, and again, that goes to the type of deposit that you're looking to make on your part. And there are heated and non-heated versions. Uh, we use a heated version primarily to reduce the viscosity of very thick materials, so it enhances the performance of it jetting out of the valve. So we can talk about some advantages of jetting. And as you can see in this video, we have a side-by-side -side comparison of a jetting valve versus your conventional uh, needle dispensing valve. The jetting valve can jet, jet 150 dots a second. And in some cases, we can go up to about 1,000 dots per second on very limited uh, production runs. We made a series of 50 dots here in you know, the fraction of a time it takes a conventional dispense valve to make the 50 dots. And again, when I'm comparing the two, they're equally accurate. We're really focusing on the high speed aspect of this. So the advantage is obviously speed. As I said, we can go up to 150 dots per second, continuous production. Uh, we don't need to use a Z motion to go up and down when we're dispensing onto automated production parts. So we keep the valve stationary, the parts are moving underneath it. So that uh, vertical motion takes time, and we can eliminate that with a, a jet valve. So you have fewer height sensors. Again, we can do the high cycle rates. Uh, capability, you know, we've got the ability to place the fluid in areas that a typical needle can't get into because we can propel it there. And it's less sensitive to dispense height. Again, we don't have to do any uh, height adjustments or worry about any nonconformities in the substrate because we're suspending the valve above the part and we're forcing the droplet onto it. The quality of the, the jet, we have a high wet dispense accuracy, smaller wet out areas, round, very uniform dots, and improved line quality. So we can not only make dots with this, but we can form stripes or lines. Conventionally, with needle dispensing valves, 
You open the valve to start your stripe, you make the stripe, and then you close the valve. And that, that can result in two things. We say uh, dog boning, which means at the very beginning of the stripe, you get an excess fluid of material, then you make your stripe, and at the end, you get that excess material again, it looks like a dog bone. Uh, and then no knit lines. When you're making a continuous stripe, say a circle, and you're mating the two ends together on a conventional dispense valve, uh, you mate the two ends together, but you have a little line forming, a knit line. With jetting, what we're doing is we're making a series of dots around, say, in a circular pattern. We eliminate that knit line, we eliminate the dog boning. When you're using a needle, uh, you have inherent problems with uh, bent needles, no chipping of parts when you're using a jet valve. Again, uh, if you have nonconformity on the surface of the substrate, when you go down to the Z motion to dispense, if you have uh, a part that's nonconforming, you could hit the part with the needle, damage the part, damage the needle. Uh, with the valve, jet valve, there's no dripping. Uh, again, we eliminate uh, dispense height variation, and with uh, dispensing needles, you can tend to have fluid built up at the end of the needle, which will now go on to the next part that you're making, making it a, a bigger application than what you need. With jet valves, we can have deposit verification. So we can use laser sensors to tell us that a deposit has been made. It's not going to tell you how much we dispensed, but it will tell you that a deposit has been made, and with the reliability of the jet valve, you know that if a deposit's made, it's a good deposit. So now we get into some typical jet valve applications, and this is, this is where you know, your imagination can go wild, because the jet valve will jet a dot, we can do stripes, uh, and it's really limited to the imagination you know, of the user. So I want to show you several applications. Uh, some you might miss on this video for a needle bonding application where we jet a dot of UV material to bond the needle, cannula into a hub. We can use it to lubricate the insides of syringes. Uh, we can use it to bond lenses to endoscopes. In this application, if you blink, you miss it. We're injecting or ejecting silicone oil onto the end of a cannula. This goes to the speed. In this video, we're making thousands of dots in seconds. And for a blood strip application, we can use it to dispense protein solutions. This goes to the speed of the jet valve. The next couple of slides, again, it shows the application, endoscope lenses, we can do that, uh, dispensing an optical adhesive. But the takeaway from this, are the size of the dots and the, and, and the accuracy and repeatability. So you can see the dots look pretty uniform. And when we get a closer look, in terms of the amount, um, 832.6 microns, 832.6 microns, 832.7, 832.6. We're dispensing at you know, 100 dots a second, and we can keep this repeatability. So we can increase the speed without compromising accuracy. Pharmaceutical applications, uh, lubricating the pumping mechanisms, bonding gel caps together, dispensing a membrane to a drug-filled tube, uh, lubricating of injector mechanism, of intraven intravenous birth control products. We can get outside the medical world, although in medical electronics you can be doing some soldering and some defluxing, so we can dispense flux, UV adhesives, potting electronics. In this application we do 150 dots in a half a second. Bonding injection molded parts, if you need to put face plates on parts. In this application, it was 150 dots in 2.4 seconds. 
batteries with uh, dispensing electrolyte solution and uh, ejecting electrolyte solution, 1,200 batteries a minute. This application is a uh, greasing and oiling application. The takeaway from this is, similarly with lines, when we're doing a series of dots, if we want to increase the shot size, we're just e increasing the frequency of dots. So we're, we're making many dots one on top of another to get larger dots and larger fills. And I'll show that again. So those blobs along the side are just a series of many dots. Electronic components, LCD displays, you know, jetting of lines for edge sealing, and EPROMs, bonding a window to integrated circuits, hard drives, dampening fluid for vibration control, and RFID dispensing uh, anisotropic silver epoxy. We have automotive applications, again, for fluxing, dispensing carbon ink, and greases. Electronics, attaching a lens uh, or a clear cover to electronic dye. Again, the viscosity here is 150,000 centipoise. We've dispensed very thick materials as well as very thin materials down to the water viscosity. Bonding a coil membrane to mini speakers for cell phones. So now we get into when, when to choose a jet valve. Jet valves are good for exceptional process control. They're very repeatable. Uh, excellent repeatability, consistent dot deposits. When you want to make extremely small deposits, but usually the main criteria are the high cycle speeds. When you want up to 150 dots a second on, uh, on regular production runs, and if you need to step that up to maybe 500, 750 dots per second on very limited runs, jetting valves are what you'd require. The typical fluids you want to dispense, greases and oils, non-curing fluids just like disinfectants, flavorings, UV adhesives, silicones, uh, fill materials with evenly distributed small particles inside them, and we can even jet cyanoacrylates. So you can jet superglues, but we typically require a preconditioning fluid go through the valve to elim eliminate any moisture within the valve. Unsuitable fluids. Reactive materials with short pot lives. Two-part epoxy is a bad fluid to, to dispense through the jetting valve. Solder pastes, you get cold welding issues. Solder pastes are, are jam-packed with the fillers. Um, and I have down here silver-filled epoxies, but there's a little caveat to that, you know, because there are guidelines for using silver-filled uh, materials. We want the particle size to be up to around 50 microns with a concentration of about 50%. The shape's important. You know, I mentioned before anastropic uh, materials. So if the particles are going to be inside the material, we want it to be spherical. We don't want it to be flake-like. So spherical particles are the best for jetting materials. Flakes we're going to have problems with. Uh, the hardness of the fillers need to be considered. We like very hard fillers. If you're using soft filling material, it's going to compact and collect around the nozzle, and it's going to create problems with jetting. Do the, uh, do the uh, filler settle? So we like things that are kept in suspension. If the fillers settle, it's not going to be good. The valve's going to clog. And fill material examples are UV adhesives with fillers and silica. So to summarize, uh, the jet valve is used to precisely apply a very controlled amount jetted onto a substrate. Uh, it allows for increased production speeds of up to 150 cycles per second in normal operation and up to 750 to 1,000 cycles per second for very limited runs. And even though we're increasing the speed some people think you have to sacrifice repeatability to get speed. Well, we're actually improving 
the quality and the control as we increase the speed. So thank you, and I'll take any questions. So the question is, can the process be intermittent and non-continuous? Yes, it can be. Uh, with the, you can you can program it to be you know continuous, intermittent. So do short stripe, space, short stripe. Uh, you can do pattern. You can so you can have a pattern control. You know when you use our our controller and our driver. So you can, uh, as I said before, you know your imagination is limitless. You can you can do various different patterns. Uh, with the with jet valve. The question is electrically conductive epoxies. Uh, when we look at that, we look at if there are fillers inside of it. So that's probably the criteria. Uh, you look at the fillers, uh, electrically conductive. Again, if it's a look at the cure, if it has a cure time, if it's a short cure, if it's a heat cure, it's no issue. But we want to look at the fillers inside of that electrically conductive epoxy to see if it's going to fit. If it's if it's flakes. Uh, we would probably prefer not to because, again, they're going to collect around the seat and you're going to either clog the valve or the, uh, the quality of the jet isn't going to be good at all. No other questions? Thank you for showing up. <laughs>